Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An unexpected turn at a Bear County murder trial. Why the defendant changed his plea moments before taking the witness stand. And we've all seen Armageddon, but what would we do if an asteroid was heading straight for Earth? NASA is making an effort to protect mankind. David Sears has that story in your morning headlines. And you've got to see it to believe it. The KSAT team scream. At SeaWorld's Hallow Scream, a breakdown of what to do, or at what to expect, rather, if you plan on visiting SeaWorld during the Halloween, Halloween season. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is October 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's at 70 degrees. It's pretty nice outside. We started a little cooler, uh, but things are going to start to warm up. We'll talk about that a little later. Let's go outside with live camp. It's another beautiful sunrise. It's going to be another warm day. and. Justin's already looking ahead to some football. Uh, it's football Thursday. We we're going to have some good weather for that tonight. We got the whole football going there. And as we look at the forecast, another uh, three points right there. Field goal is good. 84 degrees at kickoff, 78 halftime. Should be really beautiful with winds out of the south, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So if you're heading out to some of the football games tonight, uh, it'll be good. It'll be good. We'll have more great weather coming up tomorrow, too, and through the weekend, although. It will be a little warm as we get into uh, Saturday and Sunday. Let's look at the pollen count. Mold is moderate, ragweed moderate as well. Fall elm pigweed is low. So these numbers are a little better than what they were yesterday. They're not great, but they are better. And keep in mind, it is also Ozone Action Day again today. 67 Kerrville, 60 in Comfort, 62 Seguin, 72 Stinson, 70 down there in Pleasanton. And the forecast for today. Uh, we'll be up around 91 this afternoon. Sunny skies, southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. This sounds familiar, right? This is where we've been last few days. I can promise you there are some changes on the way. We've got some rain chances by early next week, and even better chances by the middle part of next week, and maybe a front. That'd be nice, right? We'll talk more about that with the extended forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. That's what we want to hear about, a front, anything. <laughs> <laughs> a look outside with Transguide this morning. There's a look there at Loop 410 and San Pedro Avenue, and there's Highway 281 at Hildebrand. Things are looking good right now. Here is today's 9 at 9. Arlington police have arrested the person they say shot four people at Timberview High School yesterday afternoon. 18 year old Timothy Simpkins is facing three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officials say the shooting may have stemmed from a fight that broke out in the school. Police say the victims are expected to survive. At least 15 people were killed this morning after a 5.9 magnitude earthquake struck southwestern Pakistan. Seven children are among the dead. At least 300 people are injured. These numbers are expected to rise as search and rescue efforts continue. This morning, the most restrictive abortion law in the country is now on hold. Last night, a federal judge ruled in favor of the Biden administration, blocking enforcement of the new Texas abortion law. Texas has already appealed the ruling, meaning the law could end up before the Supreme Court again. Senate leaders appear to be negotiating a bipartisan deal to lift the debt ceiling temporarily. Republican leaders say they will and allow an emergency debt limit extension. It would only last about two months. Lawmakers have until the 18th to make a decision. President Biden is in the Chicago area this morning visiting a construction site to push the importance of COVID vaccinations. Meanwhile, CDC officials say more people are currently getting booster shots in the U.S. than are getting their first and second dose. The game streaming service Twitch says it experienced a major data breach. Twitch pays streamers for their games. The platform is owned by Amazon and has tens of thousands of users. Shoppers at Home Depot may soon be getting deliveries run by Walmart. Home Depot is now the first retailer to join Walmart's new delivery service, Go Local. Same day and next day deliveries should be available within a few weeks in select markets. NASA says they will crash a rocket into an asteroid orbiting Earth the day before Thanksgiving. The idea behind the Daring mission is to create a planetary defense system to protect Earth from other asteroids and dangers in space. And Burger King is upping its vegetarian game with impossible nuggets. The fast food chain is also releasing ghost pepper chicken nuggets for a limited time. These are made with real chicken. Both will be available Monday. And that's today's 9 at 9. 902 right now, murder trial. We've been covering all week and unexpectedly yesterday afternoon after the defendant changed his plea. 
John Sharinghausen was on trial for the murder of Anthony Sanks on January 7, 2020. Eric Hernandez has been covering this trial and is joining us now with more on what took place yesterday. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Can you give us a little backstory on the case, please? So, yeah, so this all began in January of 2020. It was the first homicide of the year at that time. What police were saying on the stand during testimony was that Sharinghausen and Sanks at that, that day were planning on going to kill another person, but in the end, Sharinghausen goes to the apartment complex and police say that is where he killed him instead. Um, but the last text message that that Sanks has is from Sharon Hauser that says, I'm outside. <laughs> so that was pretty damning evidence that was presented to the court this week. And then yesterday, I understand that you guys were expecting Sherry Hausen to uh, testify and that didn't happen. Yeah, so this is kind of where everything was like kind of threw a curveball at all. We were expecting Sherry Hausen to take the stand and right when court started, his defense attorney asked for a motion asking the judge to prevent our case at camera from recording his testimony because he was in fear of retaliation because in the end it seemed like he was going to be naming some names, he was going to be naming some past previous crimes he may have been involved in and as well as possibly his gang affiliation. Um, when the judge said she couldn't really pick and choose what, you know, kind of explain further to her what kind of parameters they wanted and that she couldn't really make us pick and choose what to record or not to record. And that if she, he wanted safety in the courtroom, he was gonna have safety in jail as well and be segregated. And at that point, that's where he said, I'm just gonna plead guilty. So that's where he went from there. He went plead, get, pled guilty, but instead of the jury coming out, he changed that plea to no contest, so he changed it twice. And that was kind of how it ended. And, and it just kind of wrapped up from there. The jury was dismissed. And now we're left, you know, we will never know what he's going to testify to because so, he didn't take the stand after all. So what happens next? Sentencing phase, which has been scheduled for December um, because there was no a plea bargain in this in this trial. Um, the judge will sentence him. There will be like a full uh, punishment phase with uh, more testimony um, starting in December 2nd. And then the judge, Judge Velia Mesa, will give him either five to 99 or life in prison is kind of the range for a charge like this. All right. Very interesting. Yeah, it's something rare. We don't see this very often. I think it threw all of us for a loop. Even the judge was trying to find um, taking a recess, trying to kind of gather her thoughts and figure out what what to do next and to make sure it was all done properly. That you have a recap on KSAT.com. We sure do. All right. Eric Hernandez, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And in your morning headlines, we have pictures from all that overnight flooding in the Birmingham area and the latest on that judge halting the Texas about law. Uh, a couple of carjackings in the state of Connecticut and NASA finally catching up with Hollywood in a way. David Sears is here. Good morning. Finally. You know, usually it's art and real life. Right. Art imitates life. Yeah. Now it's a little different. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, you are looking at a familiar sight. Flooded streets. These vehicles stuck in high water. This is in Birmingham, Alabama and a lot of suburbs around there. That area got four to seven inches of rain in just a few hours. Several water rescues, mostly folks stuck in cars in high water. So the fire departments around the area, obviously pretty busy. Several suburbs reporting down trees, power lines, and some homes were flooded around that area as well. And we just found out a few minutes ago that a child has died due to that flooding. Late yesterday, a federal judge blocked enforcement of the Texas abortion law. Judge Robert Pittman wrote, this court will not sanction one more day of this offensive deprivation of such an important right. His ruling was 113 pages. This is a, seen as a major victory for the Biden administration. The law did not allow abortions after six weeks. One of the major points of contention was the law allowing private citizens to sue anyone who helps a woman get an abortion if she's further along than six weeks rather than the state enforcing itself. That's an extraordinary law, and this encounter to that is an extraordinary ruling. Texas is appealing the ruling. In an interesting twist, the judge would not allow a pause in his ruling while that appeal takes place, so the law is on hold for now. And you are watching an attempted carjacking taking place at a Hartford County, Connecticut gas station. Carjacker trying to rip this woman right out of the front seat. He pulled and pulled and pulled. Looks like he even paused for a second and then starts yanking on her again. No luck. She would not give in. He finally slams the door and runs off. The woman was not about to give up her car. Because had I done that again, I not only gave you my car, I gave you my house keys. I give you my personal information. Everything that I have in that car, you will get to. I had five seconds to make up my mind on whether 
I was going to fight for my life or whether I was going to just give it up. Unfortunately, not the only carjacking in that area. Another one took place around the same time. A woman noticed her car getting jacked. She tried to jump in the passenger side, but the carjacker threatened her with shooting her. Hey, NASA, worried about all of us here on Earth getting destroyed by an asteroid. Apparently, they just saw the movie Armageddon. <laughs> Came out in 96, didn't it? Where they been? Bruce Willis, Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Tyler, and Ben Affleck when they were all young. The day before Thanksgiving, NASA is going to launch a SpaceX rocket. The plan is to crash the rocket into an asteroid called Dimorphos and change its orbit. Dimorpho, where did they come up with these names for asteroids and things out in space? Justin, you're the scientist. Who comes up with these names? Dimorphos? Yeah. Is about 525 feet long. It is circling another asteroid about 6 million miles away. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. <laughs> so if this kinetic impactor technique is successful, it could be used on any space rock headed towards Earth, and you won't need Bruce Willis or Ben Affleck. <laughs> By the way, NASA is going to use a satellite to record the collision, and they are going to broadcast it on their app and on their website, NASA TV. So you can actually watch this thing happen like you were watching Armageddon. So we don't have to fly two space shuttle crews, no. land, no. drill into it. It's much simpler. Just one SpaceX rocket. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you want to take along a, a drill with you. I don't know. Maybe just <laughs> in <laughs> case. Just a handy one. Thank right? you very much. Hey, what happened to your spurs last night? We got that coming up. Hmm. Don't go away. I still have my spurs mask right here. It's, it's preseason. It'll be okay. Yeah, right. now, it's, now it's preseason. Thanks, David. We'll talk more about it coming up. Real quick, want to mention our producer just told us a 6.1 magnitude earthquake has been registered in Japan just a short while ago. We'll try to keep you updated. For now, still ahead on GMSA at 9, what does the future hold for Kunhuto music? Alicia Berrera explains after the break. And later, why those pumpkins on your front porch are carving into your wallet a little more this year. Details from an expert coming up in a live interview. And our GMSA team tries out Howl O Scream at SeaWorld San Antonio. Does it live up to its name? It seems like it. Find out in our next half hour. And welcome back. It's about 9.13. What does the future hold for conjunto music, a rhythmic beat popular across South and Central Texas that dates back to the end of the 19th century? This past weekend, an eight-year-old showed off his skills on the accordion while on stage with the musical group Garcia Brothers, proving this style of music is still going strong. Alicia Beretta has more on how the young boy made it onto the big stage. Good morning, you guys. Morning. Well, Hector Yamas, he's an eight-year-old boy. Aww. He is precious. He is so confident. He has totally got, like, the Tejano look down. He had his time to shine during Saturday's Come and Take It celebration in Gonzales. The crowd went wild, and for Hector, it was a dream come true. It's the sound that, for Hector, means family and big dreams. My grandpa was playing it, and it was my first time seen it and I liked it and he gave it to me but it was too heavy for me. That was at the age of three and now five years later he's become more confident in his craft. And Saturday at the Come and Take It he was also able to go on stage as well and play a song with the Garcia Brothers. He only took it to get their signatures on it. We did not think he was going to go up there and he started playing it in the crowd and they took him up there they were like come on up and he played a song and he did really really good. The cheers from the crowd and support from the Garcia brothers who got their start in Eagle Pass have inspired Hector and his grandpa to continue playing to keep the spirit and magic of conjunto music and the stories it tells alive. This is a future, this is a future right here. What's that? I want to be able to be like Ramon Ayala. So Ramon Ayala, he references at the end there, is the king of the accordion. And Hector is all about the Tejano Conjunto scene. He loves playing the accordion, as you could see. And he may be too young to realize it, but he's definitely helping preserve an entire culture, which his mom says she, of course, is very proud of. And is all, and that is all thanks to her parents for passing on their traditions. Hector Yamas. Yamas. Okay. Oh, nice. He's cute. I loved, yeah, he has like the whole... He's got it. Yes, he, he does. He's even at three years old. I love that yeah. picture. How cute. It's so sweet. One of those when the accordion's bigger than the kid. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine because that's a very heavy instrument, but he loves it. Oh, that's cool. Very talented. Very great story. Thank you, and did Alicia. you 
just reveal to us off camera uh. that you play? <laughs> that yeah. You have played the accordion in the past? I own an accordion. Yes. I love it. And yes. for the past probably like five years, I've been trying to get the hang of it, but I don't, I can't even get to what Hector is doing. But right you said, now. unless you practice, you kind of oh, yeah. get a little rusty. Yes, so you have to practice at least an hour a day. Hector yeah. was telling me he wow. practices three to four hours daily with his grandpa. Mm -hmm. But I feel bad for my neighbors, so I, I don't. He said there's practice. no there's no quiet way to practice. <laughs> no. When there's recording. no unless I have a soundproof room, so I'd have or, to go to like a music school or something. Or here, like in front of the Kset Studios, there there's a go. courtyard there. <laughs> and it would be awesome. Central Catholic would not be too happy. <laughs> let me just tell you. <laughs> we would love it. You but might yeah, you're be surprised, <laughs> Alicia Barreto. Thank you very much. Well, if you've just moved to San Antonio and you're looking at the calendar, yes, it is October mm -hmm. 7th. If you're wondering, is it warmer than usual? Justin Hoare would be the first to say. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It has been warm lately, at least during the afternoons. But look, October is a transition month, and this is typically the month where we start to see some fronts come through, temperatures drop off, and I'll show you some stats to prove it. So our average high on October 1st is 87. Our average low is 66. Let's fast forward to October 31st. The average high drops to 77. The average low drops to 56. This is the biggest drop of any month. So we know that October is where we start to see changes typically here in San Antonio. So far, that hasn't happened. I know we're looking for that front. There is one in the forecast next week. I don't think it's going to be a big one as far as temperatures go, but it may bring some rain at least, and that would drop temperatures a little bit. Outside right now, we've got blue skies. 72 degrees at the airport, 72 Stenson, Kelly, 71 Randolph. Uh, calm winds with maybe a little bit of a breeze here at the airport out of the south-southwest. And yes, it is another ozone action day. Those with asthma, respiratory issues, it's a little tough out there with the ozone levels. Uh, we're in the unhealthy category for those who are sensitive to that sort of thing. So just a heads up. Hopefully this will be the last day of that. Still in the 60s for Comfort, Bandera, Kerrville. It's 65 in Bandera. Nice start there, but you will be in the 70s soon. And we're going to see a lot of 90s on the map again today. A mixture of 60s and 70s around the area at this hour. 73 Pleasanton, still 69 in Kennedy. is still holding on to 68 down there in Carrizo Springs. Two points, not too bad. They did come up a little bit. It's not really to the point where you can feel it. And we'll still have some generally dry air through about Saturday before Sunday. We see the humidity spike a little bit. And it does get pretty sticky Sunday afternoon. Not only that, it's going to be hot. So there's going to be a heat index on Sunday. And that's probably our hottest day in the seven day forecast. By Monday, a little weak front comes through, maybe drops off the dew points a little bit, but they build right back by Tuesday. And this is significant, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Here's the big picture across the country. Still a lot of rain in places like Alabama and Georgia where they do not need any more rain. That low is finally lifting away. Otherwise, it is quiet here in Texas. Here's our forecast. So high pressure starts to scoot east here. We get more of a southerly flow starting this weekend. It'll be hot, and then by Sunday, it's hot and humid. We're going to watch Sunday night into early Monday morning as a weak front comes through. There's a small window for rain, about a 20% shot. Don't think we're going to get much out of this. That system passes us by. We're back in the heat and humidity on Tuesday. I mentioned that dew point of 72. It's going to be sticky and fairly warm Tuesday afternoon. That may lead to a couple of thunderstorms popping up. And then by Wednesday, here comes our next front. This one is a little stronger. I think it brings a better chance for rain, but a 30% chance we may get to up those rain chances as we get a little bit closer. Rest of today, temperatures up around 90 degrees, clear skies all day long. We'll drop down to 65 tomorrow morning, 91 Friday, 93 Saturday, 94 Sunday. And then there are the rain chances next week. Just a 20% chance early on Monday, very small chance Tuesday, and then a 30% chance Wednesday, hopefully, as we get closer, we can bump those rain chances up, guys. I hope so, because that humidity will be back pretty soon. Yes, it will. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 920, about 72 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Picking a pumpkin at the grocery store is pretty easy, but for the farmers who grew it, this year was extra difficult. We're going to explain why after the break.
And welcome back. It's 923. The winter freeze had a major impact on the vegetation in Texas. Luckily, most things have grown back bigger and better, but one industry wasn't so lucky. Pumpkin farms. Farmers say they finally are rounding out a tough year. For more details on why it was so tough, we're bringing in a pumpkin expert, Mark Carroll, joining us from Floyd County, which is up in the panhandle of Texas. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. First off, did Texas have a decent pumpkin crop this year? Yes, we had an average crop for the year. We traditionally produce anywhere from 30 to 32,000 pounds per acre. And uh, overall, the 10 year period, it was an average crop for this year. And we mentioned the winter freeze earlier. Uh, what kind of challenges did farmers have this year raising pumpkins? Uh, some of the challenges we had, we had a lot of rain this summer, which uh, prevented our farmers from getting in the fields. And uh, so pumpkins are, are, are very susceptible to funguses. And so every time it rained, they need to get in the fields to spray for funguses. And they had to spray a couple more times than normal this year to uh, keep their crop going. Mark, I'm going to ask you kind of an off-the-cuff question here. When I think of Texas, I think of all sorts of crops, including cotton, maybe, and corn, but I don't think pumpkins. Does Texas produce a sizable amount of pumpkins compared to other states? Yes, we do, and uh, Floyd County is considered the pumpkin capital of Texas. Uh, we have a big festival every year uh, called Pumpkin Days is coming up this weekend, and uh, we have about 700 acres of pumpkins we produce each year in Floyd County. And we were hearing that some people might notice that pumpkins cost a little more this year, like at the grocery store. Why, why is that? Uh, it has to do with our, our economy and a lot of our other industries. Is that our in inputs have increased. The cost of fuel has gone up. Uh, we're having a hard time getting the labor to uh, harvest the pumpkins. One of my producers, uh, he was short 50 people this year harvesting pumpkins. So it's just the, the input costs are up significantly and demand is strong this year for the for pumpkins. Uh, Mark, what's the outlook for next year? I know a lot of us in a variety of different industries are hoping things are a little closer to whatever normal is now, but do you have any sort of uh, outlook on next year? Well, for our area, it's looking well because we had a lot of uh, rain over the summer. We didn't have a lot of torrential rain. We had modest rainfall frequently, and so our ground is saturated and we have a deep soil moisture. So we're looking forward to a, a good crop again next year. Well, we look forward to that. Mark Carroll, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Have a good day. Right now it is 926, about 73 degrees. There's more head on GMSA at 9. A victory short-lived for the San Antonio Spurs. A look at what happened on the court last night. We're going to have a check-in with David Sears. Plus... <laughs> that right there is Dylan <laughs> Collins, the producer of this newscast. What you can expect to be planning on visiting SeaWorld's Hollow Scream. Our team tested out that story after the break. SeaWorld San Antonio for the 20th anniversary of Hollow Scream. We're here to check out to see if it's worth the hype. We brought some of uh, our producers along. I don't know, you guys are <laughs> pretty scared. Well, I'm, I'm scared already. So. I'm terrified. I'm we're terrified. gonna see how this goes, and we're gonna let you know if it's worth the hype. Yep. Wish us luck, guys. We got five haunts at SeaWorld San Antonio. Our newest one is the swamp at Blackwater Bayou. Imagine going to the deep backwoods of Louisiana. You find mansions, you find creatures, you find all sorts of crazy stuff. You gotta come see it. Ah! I was a little 
little nervous going in there, but it was actually a lot of fun. I think the whole atmosphere is very creepy. You don't ever know what's gonna like pop out behind the next corner. And My favorite one that we've seen so far tonight. <laughs> yeah, I may have I may have timed in on a couple screams on that one too. Okay, I am legit freaked out. <laughs> no bright lights in my yard. I like the dark. <laughs> this is very realistic. <laughs> We're in like a like a dangerous situation, but oh god. <laughs> We're coming up for two chains off. Okay, 10 out of 10 recommend that one. You know, if you want to get scared, it's a great place to be. If you want to just enjoy some great food, have some good drinks, it's a great place to be. If you want to watch a good show and watch singing and dancing, yep. you can check that out. So I am not easily spooked. However, if you are not easily scared, still come out here to see World San Antonio. It is so worth the experience. I think it was such a great time. We all had a great we experience so as well. Fun. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So GMSA yeah, executive it. producer whose screams you heard, mm -hmm. Joy Presley mm -hmm. chickened out saying she had to get some sleep. <laughs> but Stephen Cavazos and the producer of this newscast, Dylan Hello. Collins, are here. Hi. Yeah. You guys, I tell you what, did you outdid yourselves. We survived. Yeah. Now, Stephen, yeah. you were the calmest person yes. in yes. this video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of the night was me leading Dylan and Joy <laughs> really through the entire experience, really making sure they got out safely. But it was certainly a lot of fun. Yeah. Just, I just hear Joy and Dylan screams. I mean, it's still etched in my mind. <laughs> and I, I was hearing you say that the last part was the scariest part. I yes. guess was the zombie. So that area. was the zombie one. Uh -huh. um, that I guess was the last of the five. We only did, I think, what? Four? Four, four out of the five. We only got to oh, four wow. of them. But okay. We didn't get to test the, the fourth one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was definitely the scariest one we went through <laughs> because it was just so realistic. Like you get in there and you're like, okay, cool. You know, the first ones were like, they were fun, scary, but kind of like movie-ish. Right. This one you got in there and you're outside and you were just like, okay, we're in like the actual wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, real life, yeah. Apocalypse. Yeah. Zombie so apocalypse one. is what it felt like. It's yes. like a full Absolutely. immersion wow. yeah. event. So Dylan, I know you're new to San Antonio. We got you from, from Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. um, Hollis Scream's been around for quite a while here, um, but it sounds, it looks like they really upped their game out yeah. there at SeaWorld. They, they put a lot into that. I'm very impressed. Um, Com a commend to them and Chuck too. Chuck was out there with us. Yeah. Um, he's with SeaWorld and he made it a great time for us. Um, so thanks to him. Um, and yeah, I mean, I would definitely do it again. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you too. Uh, yeah, maybe with a different crowd. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I'm totally We're kidding. Uh, but I, I, I just do want to make the point to say that even if you're not easily scared, it's mm -hmm. it's such a family experience. And I think that's yeah. what it really geared towards, yeah. just like, really bringing people together. And it was nice to see everybody out and about yeah. mm -hmm. enjoying these festivities. It's been so long since I think I've experienced yeah. a haunted house. So it was really I mean, cool. Even, even I think one girl said it last, last year, we didn't really get to do much for right. Halloween, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that was probably half the fun, just yeah. doing something a little more I mean, yeah, normal it was. again. And, and it also important to note, they do follow CDC guidelines, so everyone can feel comfortable out there. Good. Hand sanitizers, everything mm -hmm. like that. All right, so uh, to be fair, we're going to try out some other stuff we are, coming up. Yes, I okay. have a, something else in store okay. coming up for next week, so make sure to watch for that. Okay. Um, potentially and, more, we'll and, see. And lastly, is Joy going to be okay? She'll be okay. <laughs> I don't know. She see. shouldn't be scared of us. <laughs> <laughs> she was scared of those people. Depends on the day, <laughs> depends on the newscast. Yes. <laughs> right. Be true. <laughs> All right, Stephen Cavazos, Dylan Collins, thank you guys. Yes, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Stephen's going to go home. Booth, I go. Dylan's going back to put his headset on <laughs> for yes. this newscast. All right, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, so it was fun. Thank you. <laughs> and taking a look outside with live cam, 73 degrees. Not scary outside no, at we all. We should probably check on Joy, though. I mean, we should probably <laughs> make that sure. Video. And I look forward to more of those, by the way, guys. Stuff. Yes, great. <laughs> that was good stuff. Okay, uh, let's go to the sky. We got this picture in. This is from the ISS over uh, San Antonio last night. 
Uh, of course, Adam mentioned it. If you got the push alert, if you have the KSAT weather app, he sent out a push letting you know that it was going to be in the sky last night, and a lot of people captured it on camera. It's always kind of hard to see, but you know, right there in the middle of your screen, International Space Station. We'll let you know when it uh, passes by again. Maybe you can snap a shot of it. Meantime, temperatures this morning in the 50s and 60s, 65 right off 62 in New Braunfels, 62 in Pleasanton. Those were the numbers earlier, the 50s and 60s go around, pretty much what we've seen all week. Now we've jumped into the 70s, and yes, it will be another warm day. Basically a carbon copy of yesterday up around 91, sunny skies, southerly winds 5 to 10. Great for football tonight. There is some rain in the forecast, and boy, do we need it. We're going to check in on the drought monitor here in just a second and talk about when those rain chances come up in the forecast. Coming up, guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look at uh, Transcad right now. Here's 281 at Hildebrand. Bright sunshine. The roads are looking great. There's Loop 410 at San Pedro. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Dia de los Muertos is a reunion and celebration with your lost loved one. So the key to a good ofrenda are the offerings placed on the second level. It's a party, so make sure to include their favorite foods like pizza or chocolate, and put out a beer or some tequila to make a toast. Your loved one may want to dress up for their visit, so put up their favorite hat, outfit, or maybe some lipstick. These offerings make a spirit feel at home, and they will bring back all those beautiful memories you share together. I was going to say hi. I didn't <laughs> know we were coming back. I was looking ahead. Right now, 938, about 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And we're going to be talking about the Spurs again as preseason games continue. What happened on the court last night? Next, with our David Sears. Well, back 942. It's, of course, only preseason, but our Spurs are now 1-1 one and one after a loss in Detroit last night. Yeah, we're going to be checking in with David Sears. I'm changing my tune because yesterday uh, I told you a win's a win. <laughs> and, and now win. today I'm going to say, yeah, it's preseason. A loss is a <laughs> loss, right? No, you, that's not what you said. No, I said a win is a win. That was yesterday, though. We just had the scary segment of the show, didn't we? Uh -huh. Yeah. Can show some of these highlights? Oh, man. Hey, uh, the Spurs in Detroit last night. I got a bone to pick with Detroit in just a second. We'll do that. But first, let's show you some highlights. Thank goodness they got Bryn Forbes because that's the guy that, uh, that saved them last night because Detroit got out to a huge lead in the first quarter. They made seven to ten threes in the first quarter, and then Bryn Forbes came back and had like 14 in the second quarter. Spurs were down like 17, something like that, something ridiculous, and they actually came back and took the lead in the second quarter, but then in the third quarter... They played pretty good, but uh, the Detroit Pistons played better. We just like showing spur highlights. We're not going to show the Pistons highlights. Well, here's one. Here's one. <laughs> yeah, they go on and win it like 115 to 105. After the game, we heard from Brent Forbes about his performance on the road in Detroit. I played with a lot of these guys for two, three years. So, um, you know, I don't think we lost any anything we had from before or anything like that. So just keep, keep, keep working and keep shooting. Yeah, keep shooting. Maybe make some. Because last <laughs> night they shot 42% from the field and 34%. Does this sound familiar? It's like I mean, it's only preseason, but remember last year it's like, you know, you got to make a basket every now and then. Yeah, right? it's almost like Bryn heard you. He got up and left his chair. <laughs> he did. He was like, I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> done with the Zoom thing. So, but anyway, it, it it's preseason. Yes. Yes. It is. It's a bunch of young guys. Any other takeaways? Dejounte from... Murray wasn't there last night. He did okay. not play. They so that's the a key off. takeaway. So he's, he's okay, but they gave him, they gave him the night off. But but here's the problem I have with last night. So you got to get these. The preseason games aren't broadcast except for a few of them. Few choice teams like the Lakers and the, you know the, the top teams. They they put those those guys on TV, but right. the Spurs aren't a top team right now apparently so they don't put them on tv so you got to go to the spurs app mm -hmm. but when you go to the spurs app for an away game they're giving you the feed inside the arena which means you're watching what they're putting up on the scoreboard right you, you know how you go into the at&t center and mm -hmm. they show the video 
uh-huh. of uh, of the game, and right. then they, they they throw some graphics, you know, go Spurs go, and all this kind of stuff. Well, that's what was happening last night. So so the Pistons would make a basket, and the next thing you would see was three replays of that basket, and then they would put all these graphics up there on that basket, and then they come back to the action, and the Spurs were done. It was like they were back down on the floor, so you didn't see what the Spurs did on the floor. It's like, what, what are you doing? Well, Why are you showing us this on a preseason game at the NBA when you guys got billions of dollars? I did say that with a B, billions of dollars, and you can't give me a feed where I can see both teams playing at both ends of the court? Come on. It's an app. We're modern technology. What's wrong with you people? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the debut together. of Sears' Soapbox. Man, I just, it's like... I agree. Well, I mean, you watch the game and you go, uh, what just happened? So you oh, were. What, the so you had a three. So you had a problem with the feed. I had a problem with the feed. Yeah. I didn't, I, I, forget the game. I, I just like, man, what, what just happened? And of course, you're listening to the play by play of the Spurs. So you could kind of keep up with it. Sure. But I was trying to watch a TV show and watch the Spurs. I don't remember what I was watching on TV. So I had the TV up mm-hmm. and I had the Spurs game on my phone and I had the computer over here keeping up with it. And then, you know, all I'm seeing is graphics from their scoreboard. Like, I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. I want to see what the spurt right anyway. okay we should write yeah. in so we're just warmed up now That's have you considered a strongly worded letter mm-hmm. nah i'm not gonna waste my time <laughs> this is it this is it <laughs> they only played that Detroit it. once so not about back to the game real quick uh, can i ask you uh, i know two games into preseason it are is our are our expectations down here keep them down here and then we just kind of see where it goes yeah. from here build on that from the, exactly. for the Spurs? Keep them okay. low, and that way every time we take a step up, it's mm-hmm. just that much better. Okay. So we're just hoping that they get in the playoffs. Remember, they hadn't been in the playoffs for a couple years in a row. Right. After that, like, you know, half a decade stretch. 22-year run yeah. or something. So we're just mm-hmm. we're just hoping they can get in the playoffs. And like okay. I said, DeJounte Murray didn't play last night. Uh-huh. They're young. They're trying to figure it all out. Pop's got to learn how to coach sure. these, these young guys and let them, let them loose. you got to let, let the horses run, baby. Let them go. <laughs> Let him so, go. And so right. Pop's excited. So that's good that uh, he's kind of rejuvenated on this, this whole deal. So. Okay, today's we'll blood pressure check sponsored by Walgreens. Thank you, David <laughs> Sears. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> okay, 947 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin. Well, You're calmer like we, I, about I feel it. Like we to go sit David like in the like after a boxing match, like in the corner, like you know, get. The I'm gonna teach him Ron Artest breathing exercises after <laughs> watching that documentary on Netflix oh, last goodness. night, Malice in the Palace. I told yeah. you to check it out. Yeah, it's I do. Nice. I do want to see that. I've heard yeah. good things. Yep. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's hard to. That's was like what 15 years ago. It's been a long, been a long, long time. Because the Palace course is long not gone. There, there, Auburn Hills. <laughs> it's out here. Uh, good stuff. Uh, you know, we, we did get a little bit of rain last week, guys, but uh, didn't really help us with our drought situation. You look across the state. This was last week, okay? So we started to see the drought kind of creep in. We did get a little bit of rain, so you see some of the, those dry areas shrink. But the moderate drought areas actually grow a little bit, 8% of the state now in drought. And as we zoom in on our area, there's a couple places we're watching out in there. Big Wells, Eagle Pass, those are a couple spots where the drought has now returned. And we're kind of moving in that trend where we're going to see the drought maybe expand a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get some rain next week and that'll sort of uh, push it back a little bit. But we are dealing with some rather dry conditions. And outside right now, we're looking at 72 at the airport. Dew point is at 62. That number has come up a little bit. That's where you start to feel it a little bit. But by the afternoon, thankfully, it will come back down into the 50s. It is an ozone action day, as we've been saying, just like yesterday. If you have asthma, respiratory issues, it's one of those days where you probably don't want to spend a lot of time outside with elevated levels of ozone. Satellite picture shows no clouds at all. Temperatures are in the 70s, 72 at the airport, 72 Bernie stage. Still in the 60s for Seguin and New Braunfels. Low 70s, Uvalde increase, so Springs as well. One of the warm spots, Kennedy checking in at 75. Dew points, as I mentioned, are starting to rise a little bit. We, we do get a little bit of a southerly wind, although uh, I don't think it's going to get all that humid, not until Sunday. That's when the dew points really start to jump up. We are seeing some moisture beginning together there along the coast. Big picture across the country, not a whole lot to look at, but we have had a ton of rain across parts of Alabama and Georgia. Here's a look at some of the uh, radar estimates. And we're talking about seven inches there around Birmingham, close to 10 inches near Huntsville. So that's why there has been some flooding issues here. Thankfully, the storm system that's producing all that rain is moving away. For us, speaking of rainfall, there are a couple chances for us 
over the next seven days or so. This weekend will be hot. I'll caution you there. I think we could see some mid 90s. Not only that, it's going to be humid on Sunday. So hot and humid, bad combination. Uh, and by the time we get into Sunday night, early Monday morning, there is a small window for rain. 20% shot. We're on the tail end of things here. The storm system is pretty far north. I don't foresee us getting a lot of rain out of this, but there is a chance there. And that front that produces the rain doesn't really move through. So by Tuesday, we're still hot and humid. Could see a couple of thunderstorms pop up. And then by Wednesday, here comes a stronger front. And this means a better chance for rain, about 30% shot. And I think that would be Wednesday into Thursday. So something to look to. And we could get a little Pacific moisture working in with that front. So that would be good. 90 degrees today, sunny skies. We fall into the 70s tonight, eventually 60s by tomorrow morning, 65 to start your Friday. 91 on Friday, 93 Saturday, 94 Sunday with humidity returning. And then look for some rain chances uh, Monday, Tuesday. And there's your 30% chance of rain on Wednesday. This Hispanic Heritage Moment is brought to you by Taco Cabana. The charro and the charreria has its roots dating back to the 16th century and played a very important role on the Mexican haciendas and is the forerunner to what we know today as the American rodeo. During the Mexican Revolution, the large haciendas were divided up and fearing the loss of the charro traditions, the Federación Nacional de Charros was formed in 1933. The oldest association in the United States is right here in San Antonio where continued traditions and skills of the charros are on full display at a Charriada. Not only do men take part in the events, the ladies in the Escaramuza teams impress the crowds with their carefully crafted choreography, which has been described as ballet on horseback. The San Antonio Charros Association's goal is to preserve the history, art, and culture of horsemanship from Mexico for future generations. It is Fire Prevention Safety Week, and the San Antonio Fire Department says more children are tuning out the life-saving noise of the smoke detector because of the increasingly noisy digital world we live in. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, The Creative Ways, our department is raising awareness. Jesse, remember we were talking about NFTs, non-fungible token, and the NFT, the, the art that's not there? Yes. I'm we're, kind of understanding a little bit better these days. What if fashion wasn't there either? Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll tell you the headline. <laughs> yeah. uh, the next fashion trend, clothes that do not exist. Yeah, this is, uh, so for many, <laughs> the idea of buying clothes that don't exist is a con conceptual leap too far, but emerging digital fashion stores are tapping into a growing market, not actual clothes, but digitally generated outfits that stores simply uh, Photoshop mm -hmm. onto a customer's photos or videos to be posted on Instagram or elsewhere. So we're not talking about the emperor's clothes here. They are likely to become a way to dress your avatar when interacting in online games and in meeting places, all while reclining in your sweatpants at home. So yeah, look uh, like that. <laughs> some people are leaving the actual fashion industry and getting into these mm -hmm. digital outfits. Yeah, they're saying there's going to be a lot of money in this soon. I don't get it. <laughs>